Now, obviously, I have a lot of fun flying the Ortus. After I changed the build on the ship, the playstyle has also changed. Now, I am still looking to improve the torpedo build. The current torpedo build is performing really well. The DPS is phenomenal. One of the highest DPS cruisers in the game. And I still want to improve that, because why not? I did buy A-type torpedo launchers for the Ortus, but they are currently not at this station, so I will have to go and pick them up. Now, the current range is 17.06 kilometers. that's pretty good for torpedoes. However, I want to improve that to 25 or 30 kilometers. Basically, I want to match the scrambler range. That would mean I could orbit at 20 kilometers, and my torpedoes will be able to hit the target without a problem. 20.63 kilometers is the scrambler range on both the Federation Navy and Republic Fleet Scrambler. I might continue using the medium Nosferatu because of the power grid issues that I have with this ship. The Artus does not have a good power grid, and that is something that I just have to accept. As for the rigs, I might change uh, the auxiliary thrusters into extra power grid rigs while I integrate the auxiliary thrusters with other navigation rigs. Still haven't really decided on that because as of now the ship is performing really well. Now one silly thing that I want to try out is a dual propulsion Artus. However, I can't use the large shield booster with the Mike Wobdrift because, well, low power grid. So I will have to go and take one medium shield booster. And this, this is basically uh, the only problem that prevents me from using the dual propulsion fit on the Ortus. I really don't like to use a medium shield booster on this ship because the large shield booster does compensate for the low shield resistances. So the medium shield booster will definitely not do a really good job if I start taking any serious damage. And surprisingly, I have a lot of power grid left now with this build that uses dual propulsion mods. So we yeah, had definitely a lot of room for playing around on the Ortus. Now let me quickly return to the previous build. This build is practically my primary torpedo build that I usually use against most ships. Against Balgorns and against ships that can be a big problem for close range, I swap the build to a long range build. And of course the combat rigs are still the same. However, range will be improved, so uh, the rigs on this ship are not the final build Alright, now it will be time to undock and it will be time to go to blow up some ships. The first target today may surprise a lot of you. We have a special first target. Let's quickly warp towards the location. Warp now drive we have 1, 2, 3, 4 scrammers on the Ortus, which equals to around 20 points of warp disruption. And I will need all of them in order to catch the next ship, or the first ship for today. We have one Orca, which has been released in the last big update. Excellent warping, I have 20 kilometers range on the scrammers. Orca has been, has been engaged, they have been scrambled should have enough points to hold them. Now I will approach towards the zero kilometer orbit. The Orca is losing shield. I'm doing some pretty good damage on the... on the industrial ship. They are quite rare to find over here. The Orca is also classified. It's classified as a big battleship. Between a capital and a battleship, right in between. 
Okay, well, that was fast. To be honest, I expected a lot more tank from the Orca. But that was a f that was a good first kill for today. Let me take a look at the kill mail. 5.3 billion, which is just like a faction battleship and pretty good loot as well. We got some mining drones, which can be sold for a very nice price. Well, that was a very nice and a very lucky first catch. Now let's go to the next target. We have one Dalgorn and we have we have one battle cruiser. Now both are at a different location within the same mission. The primary target will be the Dalgorn because that ship is more dangerous and the most dangerous ship is mostly focused as the primary target. I have three tracking disruptors because this Balgorn is a sniper for some reason and at 40 kilometers they could hit me so in order to prevent the beam lasers from hitting my ship I will use tracking disruptors the Balagorn is in 50% hole, the Balagorn is still alive as well, and just as I thought, the Balagorn is shooting at me, but the tracking disruptors do a good job. The Balagorn has been destroyed, okay, that's the first kill, let's quickly go after the Balagorn. And the Balagorn has also been destroyed. Very nice, we got a faction battleship and we caught the battlecruiser as well. Let me align and I will show you the, the kill mails for both of the ships. 4.5 billion, not bad, very interesting build for the Balgorn. A sniper Balgorn with triple webs and a scrambler as well as a large neutralizer. So basically any ship that gets close to the Balgorn would get webbed and the sniper Balgorn will be able to shoot them down. Overall I would say a interesting idea but the, the Balgorn is not a good sniper ship. It's excellent with pulse lasers at close to medium range distances. Let's go towards the next target. This is the torpedo troll build with, of course, torpedo launchers. We have another battleship, a rock that was sniping at around 120 kilometers. They have been tackled. Now let me quickly approach towards the optimal range. They have been scrambled and webbed. I will orbit at... I will orbit at zero. Just to be safe in case they decide to shoot at me and of course they did decide to shoot at the Ortus, but the railguns at this range will not do a lot of damage, so I was safe. Okay, that's a nice looking explosion as well. And of course, a very nice kill. Now, let me show you the, the kill once the kill pops in in the fleet chat. Overall, you can easily use this build against battleships and battlecruisers. If they are built as a sniper, then you don't have to worry about then you don't have to worry about anything. 1.8 billion, not bad. They had dual webs and dual target painters. A sniper rock. Overall, a very nice kill. Next target we have Hurricane Protect. Now, 
I think that Hurricane prototype is Warp drive a bait active. because they are lurking around in a Serpentis large anomaly. So I built this ship. I took the normal medium missile launchers just to to be safe and I warped at 50 kilometers, 51 kilometers, which is okay. I will quickly go into optimal orbiting distance, which will be around 37 to 42 kilometers. And now uh, I did engage the hurricane prototype. Seems like they are trying to approach the Ortus, but my speed is pretty good, even with the DPS nanocore. And they have also engaged me as well. Let me turn on the large shield booster and capacitor the battery. The hurricane is now into low shield. Into very low shield. And I was correct. This hurricane was a bait hurricane. I would say they have one scrammer, one web, and perhaps one Nosferatu or one neutralizer although i don't see the neutralizer at the moment definitely using a medium shield booster and now they are trying to burn away but my orbit will hold also look like they tried to slingshot the ortus but for that you have to go around around 1.5 to 2 kilometers per second which works with a fast velocity by the way but this hurricane doesn't have enough speed to to do that okay that was a nice kill i'm very curious to take a look at the build of that hurricane because i still have my suspicion that it was a bait hurricane well, Scrammer, Medium Nosferatu, and a web, which was PvP ready, if you ask me. But I did keep my range, and I was very careful at what I am doing with, with the ship. Okay, let's go towards the next Warp target. drive active. We have a Vigilant. Now that should be fun. I think the Vigilant will be destroyed pretty quickly with the torpedo launchers. The damage application on cruisers should be good, but I guess I am about to find that out very soon. Okay, there is the Vigilant, excellent, warping right where I have to be. Okay, they have been scrambled and wept. Vigilant lost shield. Vigilant lost armor. And Vigilant, well, lost hope. That was quick. Let me take... Let me take range. Aligning towards that point in space. And now let's take a look at the kill. 1.4 billion, not bad. A shield tank Vigilant with the large shield booster. Well, not bad. Some pretty good loot from the faction cruiser. Drive but the webs are expensive. Now, let me show you uh, why I like to use the Ortus in low sec. This is the Ashimu, and we have one. Caracal sniper lurking around. Had a pretty good warping. Landed at 12 kilometers from the cruiser. They have been webbed and pointed. Now I will orbit at 21 kilometers. The Caracal is slowly losing the shield. Now they are at 5% shield. And now they are into armor, but unfortunately they have a lot of a lot of stabs, and the Ashil by default doesn't have 
a lot of points because I usually run dual webs on this ship. Now the Ortus, on the other hand, doesn't suffer from that problem. And the Ortus is basically made for low sec hunting. And well, the Caracal did return. I did jump in the Torpedo Troll Ortus and this time let's see if they can work away from dual scramblers. They have been scrambled and webbed. The Caracal is now into armor. Now the Caracal is into hole and it looks like they can't warp away. I had a lot more points than they had stabs. And of course, the bonus on scrambler strength helps a lot for, for holding targets. Dual scramblers are practically optimal for most ships in low sec. Now let's take a look at the kill. Oh, that's a pretty solid Caracal Sniper kill. And I I got most of the of the expensive loot. Always nice to have extra C-type medium missile launchers. They are quite expensive. Warp drive active. Unfortunately the faction drone did not drop, but that's okay. Was a nice kill. Now we have another ship in a anomaly that I believe is also a bait. We have one Mahler Guardian. Now a Guardian is usually super tanky so I don't expect to go through the tank of that ship on my own. The shield got deleted in one hit. The Guardian has locked me on but it looks like I was wrong. This doesn't seem like a bait guardian because they are taking heavy damage on the armor. I did expect a very tanky, very tanky Mallard guardian, but I guess that wasn't the case. They were destroyed very quickly. I'm very interested to see the build on that ship. In most cases, when you see a ship like that inside of a classic anomaly, it's most likely a bait. That's from my personal experience. 93 million and well that's a uh, that's a weird build. I will admit that's a very weird build for a guardian. A shield Adaptive Hardener, okay. Well, let's go to the next target. The orbit set at zero. We have one Dominix. I warped from the wrong direction, but that's okay. I can always warp towards warp my drive teammates. Active. And now I am at 41 km from the Dominix. I will approach to zero. This is where I wish I had the dual propulsion Ortus. I would be able to approach a lot faster. But even the afterburner can bring me into optimal range very quickly. Okay, orbit is going to be at zero. Well, that was quick. That was a nice catch. I was lucky that I started shooting on time. Now let me let me take range have to align towards a point in space. Now let's take a look at the kill. Not bad. A armor tank, Dominix. Balanced build between DPS and tank. Which is okay. Looks pretty nice. Let's go towards the next target. Now we have another hurricane. This one is also most likely a bait hurricane. For some reason I've seen a lot of bait hurricanes lately. 
So there's there's probably something that I am missing, but that's okay. Waiting for the fleet warp. The orbit should be set. Now when I think about it, the dual propulsion autos makes a lot of sense. I used to do that with the Cinnable, and it did well, but missiles don't suffer from the tracking problem, so I can easily use the mic Objective and Afterburner at the same time. Okay, we are fleet warping towards the target in any moment. And of course, once I get the torpedo optimal range up to 25 or 30 kilometers, the mic Objective will, will perform really well. Okay, well, I guess the fleet warp did not work, warp but drive we'll active. manually warp towards the target. The orbit has already been set. The build is the torpedo troll build. And the target is the hurricane prototype. Excellent, warping right in the optimal range. Hurricane has been scrambled as the web. Let's orbit at zero. Looks like the shield on the hurricane is is holding really well. Looks like they might have used a damage control. I also forgot to use the second ballistic control. And the hurricane has been destroyed. Nice. Okay, let me take range. And let's take a look at the Active. at the kill. Let's go towards the next target. Orbit at zero. We have a tier 10 battlecruiser, now that might be interesting, with faction drones. Unfortunately I did have the, the wrong warping, that was my bad. I should have warped from the, from the station, but it's okay. Alright, that was a very nice, nice roam with the Ortus. This ship is very fun with torpedo launchers, although it still remains very risky to fly the ship in this way, mostly because one mistake can cost you the ship. Now, next time uh, when I return with the Ortus, uh, I will most likely show you the, the different build that I did come up with. Basically, uh, I will change the, the rigs and I will equip the A-type torpedo launchers. So uh, that should be fun, really, really curious to see uh, how that will work, hopefully it will end up being worth it, but we will see. And with that being said, hope that you enjoyed, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.